Welcome, you plebeian scum. My name is Alistair McAllister, not to be confused with my brother, the sinister minister Alistair McAllister. Now, enough with the tomfoolery. Let's get down to business. I shall be telling y'all a tale. <laughs> <Y'all>. <laughs> this tale is based on a true story, but some embellishments have been made for comedic purposes. Also, a ton of cliche jokes and scenes have been added to elevate levels of cringe. So, if you find something funny, please feel free to laugh. Like, ha. <laughs> It's nice, yeah. And so if you find something hilarious, you just laugh even harder. Just get, get the diaphragm in there. Just go, mm. Yeah, there you go. And then if you find something just really uncomfortable and awkward, you just like shift in your chair, be like, ooh, that didn't feel good. So today we shall do something a little different from the rest of the concert. You've seen some great performances from some of the other com- composers, but my friends, we have said Let's see, we have saved. Some fool graced this chair. I can't stay in it. Yes, it is quite my problem. So, as I said, we have saved the best for last. Now, if I had on my book, I could tell the story, but I. Hi. Thanks. Oh, dear. Sorry, me. Excuse me, I'm taking my day for, for you, my good sir. Well, thank you, though. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I will, I will. Quite, quite well. All right, so let us begin our story. This is called The Chauncey Story by author Zephyr Fragil Manotengo Glegli, Antonio Rubin Wellington, with Percival Albus Alexander Michelarius, Thomas Gigirli Zonimus Aladin Retardando the 92nd. <laughs> and shall be addressed as such. It was a warm summer morning in Waco, Texas, and our protagonist sets out on his daily walk to his first class, and his name was Chauncey McDevin Flebin. Chauncey was just a normal college junior. He had straight A's, consistently made the dean's list, and was the best trumpet player in the band, and was the nicest person you'd ever meet. As he set forth to walk in his class, he noticed something quite different, a female. Sprinkles McDougal Smackle. My word. <laughs> she, had the mo- she was the most beautiful girl he'd ever seen. She had long, beautiful blonde hair, big, deep blue eyes, and nice light skin. She also had a great body. I do say so myself, and I do. You can tell by how it says, borrowed from a certain Victoria's Secret on her caboose. <gasps> I mean, I would have taken it as a compliment, but you know, to each their own, it's fine. So anyways, Sprinkles looked hot. Chauncey immediately got nervous. What would he say to her? How does he impress her? What would he do if she approached him? Well, and luckily for him, she did just that. Hello. (laughs) Chauncey got a bit nervous. He couldn't even form a comprehensible word. So Chauncey did what any normal college junior would do to get out of a bad situation, sleep. Quite aggressively, I might add. 
This next part about Chauncey getting up when somebody tries to give him some unwanted tea is pretty boring, so I'll just skip to the next part. Things like this had continued to go on for another three months before Chauncey had enough. Chauncey decided that he needed to be forward with her and not let her slip away. He spent the next few days building in confidence. How did you do this, you ask? I'll let you figure it out. <laughs> Chauncey takes a few deep breaths and begins to approach Sprinkles. He can feel his insides trembling, though that may be the totally not alcohol. He finally gets to her and he says, Sprinkles, I've been trying for the past three months to talk to you and to tell you how I feel. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Your hair is exquisite. Your eyes are like a pond. Your face is like the sun. Sprinkles, will you please be mine? And she said, Well, if I were to rate you on the scale, you'd be a 10. But I'd be using the pH scale, so that means you're basic. <laughs> Maybe if you had a different hairstyle, I'd consider it. A new hairstyle? Well, that shouldn't be too bad. I mean, how could it be getting a new hairstyle? Chauncey decided to accept the challenge and make way for the barber shop. <laughs> Chauncey looks at his watch. It was five minutes before his first class. He had a choice to make. Does he go to class or does he skip to go to and get a new hairstyle? Let's take a vote. So what does Chauncey do? Do you want him to skip class? You know what? Oh, we got some dangerous people in the background. Nice influence on the children. And uh, who wants him to go to school and be a nice young lad? Anybody? Great. I'm not going to count that, so I'm just going to make my choice here. So Chauncey decides to go to find the nearest barbershop because he needs that woman. Welcome, welcome, sit down and relax. We'll have a new do for you in a jiffy. What can we do for you? Um, I, I would like a new hairstyle. I want, I want to impress a lady. Well, let's give you a nice new look. Magnificent, that'll be $400. And after getting a stunning new haircut, Chauncey goes back to Sprinkles to once again ask her to be his. Sprinkles, I got a new haircut just for you. What do you think? And she said, Well, you got the hair and it does look quite nice. But you can't have that kind of hair and not have the clothes to go with it. Get some new clothes, then we'll talk. Isn't she just lovely? Who wouldn't just want such a catch in their life? Chauncey took this as a second challenge to win her love. He decided to cut class again to get some new clothes, and he was off on his journey. Oh
this job. What can we do for you? Uh, I would like to change my appearance. Uh, my clothes are too bland, so I want to get a new outfit. Ah, yes. Let's get that right. Chauncey was very excited with his new look. He did look rather dashing, if I do say so myself. And I do. He went right back up to Sprinkles and said, I think I like this change. It makes me look really cool. What do you think? Will you please be mine? And she said, Wow. You do look nice. Wait. You don't have a tattoo. A tattoo? I didn't know you wanted me to have a tattoo. Ugh. I can't believe you actually thought that you could wear such nice clothes with a rocking haircut and not have a tattoo. Either get a tattoo or get lost. I still can't believe this is going on. By this point, one might think that Chauncey would just give up after such horrible rejection. But if you think this, you couldn't be farther from the truth. Chauncey decided to get a tattoo for his true love. Parlor. As far as you know, we're authorized to use these machines. Uh, I'd like to get a tattoo. Really? I thought you came in here to find world peace. We know you're here for a tattoo, dumbass. A tattoo of what? Uh, I'm not really sure. I want to impress a girl. Well, why didn't you say so? I know exactly what to get you that lady. show what to think of that. It's quite odd. Let's we'll move on to the next part of the story. Chauncey goes back to Sprinkles after getting the tattoo. He was trembling at the thought of her asking for yet another change, but he loved her imbecile. He walks up to her and says, Sprinkles, please, I beg of you, don't make me change anything else about myself. I've skipped a whole day's worth of classes spent over $500, and completely lost my old self. Now, will you please be mine? I must say, you do look great. However, when you say you completely lost your old self, that's not true. You look cool, but you still act like a wimp. You may have the clothes, the hair, and a tattoo, 
But on the inside, you're just a really big square. Oh! Chauncey was mad. I'm talking livid. He had gone through so much for her, but she just took his heart and smashed it into little tiny pieces. So he did what any angry college junior would do. <laughs> Whoa. Dude, calm your temper. I don't want to be with someone who can't control his anger. Get lost. Chauncey fell to the floor in tears. What has he done? He completely changed himself for a person he barely knew. He had now truly lost himself. He thought to himself that when he used to just be a normal college junior, now he was a hollow shell of that person. That day forward, he stopped going to classes, he stopped going to marching band rehearsals, orchestra rehearsals, etc. He only left his apartment to go get food. This went on about for four weeks. Then one day, just out of the blue, he was watching YouTube on his phone, and he saw a video that changed his life. What was the video, you ask? Oh, I'll tell you. It was a short two-minute video of a kitten playing with a rubber ball. Chauncey began to smile. He started to laugh, and he laughed for a while. He felt just a little spark of happiness in his heart. He hadn't felt this joyous for a long time. Well, if you count four weeks as a long time. He put down his phone, went to the bathroom, and then he looked at himself in the mirror. After a while staring into the mirror, he thought to himself, I wonder if Sprinkles would like this video. Chauncey! No! 